What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? I'm the Godless Engineer, and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. Today's video is a clip from The Line. If you want to catch me on The Line, I'm on there once a month to host Skep Talk. Uh, the Line also has a number of other shows that you might be interested in. So after you watch this clip today, why don't you go on over there, subscribe, and be sure to catch the next show. Uh, is calling in and Andrew, what's up? What's up, gentlemen? How you doing? Uh, pretty, pretty good. good. How you doing? Awesome, awesome. Happy Monday. Um, yeah, my my point is, it, it's arrogant to say that God doesn't exist. Um, like we weren't there during the beginning of the universe. We don't. We haven't been to the end of the universe. We haven't died. So how do you even know? Like what happens after the de death? So it's just a little arrogant, like to say, oh, there's no aliens, like. Do you guys, I don't know if you guys have said, we know for sure there are no aliens. So, um, I don't know, just coming out as an, uh, saying atheism is true, I think is a very arrogant position. Okay. What are your thoughts there, Aaron? Well, you mentioned a few places that we haven't been. So the beginning of time, uh, what are we like when we're dead? The thing is though, we have plenty of things that we can check while we're here. So, you know, usually when someone says that they're a believer in God, they say that God is present in the here and now, not just you know, 14 billion years ago at the creation of the universe and just stopped existing then. So I can look around and say, hey, do I see these sorts of things that I expect if there is a God actively participating in the universe as we speak? And there are things that you might expect, especially when you have the attributes of the God is all powerful, all knowing, all good. Uh, the things that that fails to explain usually when we talk about like the problem of evil, the problem of unnecessary suffering of which the world is unfortunately full of. And the only thing that seems to fix it is us trying to do what little bit we can with our extremely limited abilities. And the fact of the matter is, if I'm doing more to relieve suffering than the almighty, that's at least some evidence against their being an almighty, all good being. So my personal take on this is that I I don't say that God definitely doesn't exist uh, unless we're talking about specific definitions. So like if you want to say Yahweh exists or it, any of the definitions of God that we have, I definitely say that those don't exist. Like I feel like I can shoulder the burden of proof to show that those gods don't exist. But as far as the general idea of God existing, I, I remain agnostic on that. So I, I don't say that God uh, in, in all cases just definitely doesn't exist or can't exist or anything like that. And as far as aliens go, I, I feel like the possibility or the, sorry, the plausibility of life arising on another planet is uh, pretty good. So I think that what we consider aliens do exist out there somewhere. Now, whether or not they exist anywhere near us, I probably not uh, because it's, it's a gi gigantic universe. So um, I, I don't think that any exists near us that they could get to us like anytime soon uh, or have been near us. Uh, but as far as, as God goes, uh, this general idea of God, uh, I, I look for reasons to believe. So like, um, Andrew, you said, well, you haven't, you weren't there at the beginning of the universe and the way that I, come at that particular proposition is okay yeah i wasn't what does the evidence show us well what is the ev does the evidence indicate that there's some kind of creator god or intelligent being that causes the universe to come into existence when you start looking at the science uh, of it we've got perfectly natural explanations for how this universe could have inflated and and how things progress from that point forward and so i don't see any room for a supernatural God to exist that like, there's no need for a supernatural God or, or a God or deity intelligence or anything like that. Like we just simply don't need it. And one thing that I've started saying on my channel a lot is nature's going to nature. And what I mean by that is that natural laws and, and like the fabric of reality just sort of operates. Um, and that's regardless of whether or not there's an intelligent being there, we don't have any evidence that suggests that there is an intelligent being. So there's no reason to believe that there's some kind of intelligence that causes causes all this to happen. And if you think that there is an intelligence that causes all this to happen, I think that you would have to an answer like fundamental questions like where is God in the water cycle? Like where, where is God needed for that particular thing to operate? And I think that the, the bridge right here that needs to be connected is between God and nature. Like you, you need to 
solidly show that God is required for nature to operate. And I think that that's a, an incredibly hard task. Yeah. Um, I understand that the universe functions through natural law and those laws are not broken. And so if we have laws, somebody had to make those laws. I don't know if it's a intelligent being as described in the Bible. Cause I agree. With well, the uh, can I, can, can the I stop theology. you right there? Well, can I stop yeah. you right there? Because you're already begging the question. You're, you're, you're already like, uh, you're, you're starting from the position of somebody or something had to create it, I guess is maybe what you're saying. And uh, I, I, I feel like starting from that position instead of, well, how did it come into existence or how does it, you know, operate and all this other stuff? Like, I feel like that's a better question than starting off from immediately identifying that there's some kind of like intelligence or being or, or something out there that had to create something. That's uh, a presupposition that I don't think that you can actually substantiate. Okay. Natural laws. They just came into existence through natural means. It could be, it could have been natural means. Maybe God is just a naturalist being that started the whole universe and instituted natural law. Um, I, I would say if God is a natural being, natural then law God universe. is not supernatural. I wouldn't call that God anymore. I would call that an alien, basically. So if it's powerful enough to create the whole universe, I would qualify it as God. Whether it's a being or a, a, a essence of, of power, that I, I just I don't see how you can. I don't know how you is can it is it inside that. or outside of space time? Well, uh, um, if I may, the question was, of course, where do these natural laws come from? Does nature make nature? So let me give you some examples of actually how we understand where the laws, quote unquote, come from. Are you familiar with the second law of thermodynamics, Andrew? I've heard it. Yeah. So uh, for the sake of the audience as well, this is basically, you know, in simple terms, why things run down. And the results of it, where this actually comes from, is basically a combination of two things. The existence of atoms and counting. You get the second law of thermodynamics, basically, that some states have more ways of existing than other ways, and so they're more probable. So, for example, it's possible that all the air molecules in the room I'm in that are just randomly bouncing around could all bounce in such a way that they all go into the corner of my room and the rest of my room is vacuum and I start, like, choking. Now, this pretty much never happens. And why is that? Is that actually it's obscenely improbable that all the molecules would bounce and go in that one particular direction. That is just a regularity that happens, not because of some sort of underlying thing forcing that, but just that there's only one way all the molecules to be crammed up in one corner, but there are countless ways for those molecules to be randomly assorted in my room. So how do we get the second law of thermodynamics? Just by counting and saying this number is bigger than this number, so you're going to see more of this than that. This is literally how we get one of the most fundamental laws in thermodynamics and explaining um, basically all the motion of useful energy. So that's an example of something where we don't need a god to explain it. All we have to do is count. Yeah, yeah, you are not, you, you've offered so, a naturalistic explanation, um, and I'm saying behind that explanation, a naturalistic being could have started that naturalistic you say yeah, could but have, don't you but feel why like is it necessary he might yeah. exist outside of space and time but in, initiate that naturalist process I, I don't know what any of that means like that that i i mean i feel i feel like may, maybe i just i'm not understanding but that that sounds incoherent to me well, would you mind telling us like do you have are you arguing for a specific god here or do you believe in a specific god um i i do believe in a specific god um, i'm not very sure anymore but i'm I, I i would just say it's probably more probable than not that there has to be something um and so yeah the, the christian god oh, okay so the, I the christian god evidence for that i don't have scientific evidence for that but i am saying that there there should there there seems to be enough evidence for something what what evidence is this other than your personal incredulity about like the second law of thermodynamics or the water cycle or how things operate in nature like uh, other than all that what what is the actual evidence that you have to suggest that okay um i tried giving one um so let me just try giving one more it's uh hum humans throughout for hundreds of thousands of years or tens of thousands of years have always believed in gods or divinity or have had a mythology um like uh, this this spans across cultures and so it's, it seems to be it's built into us um it's been programmed into us to believe in 
a god or gods or something spiritual. So why why do humans have spirituality if it's constantly being disproven and yet we still believe in it? So I believe that that has to be a footprint of the divine into us. So your evidence is um, either a bandwagon fallacy or an argument ad populum. Oh, you can call it, I guess, if you're calling it that. Well, well, uh, I mean, because... uh, Can I give an example of... Oh, let me just hop in here. So it's true that, yeah, the beliefs in supernatural entities is extremely common. But one thing you'll notice is also just how immensely diverse those things are. And it seems to be extremely cultural that... If you were born in India, you are far more likely to have a religion that is the majority religion there than Christian or Jewish, for example. Uh, You're not very likely to be born in the Amazon and grow up to be a Zoroastrian, for example. The fact that it has this sort of cultural bent to it and it seems to travel along those sorts of lines makes it look more like it's fashion than it's reality. I mean, after all, there is uh, clothing around the world. But we don't say that there is a clothing gither. We just say, hey, this is something that people um, use and produce and the uh, different weaves and the different colorations of that is ultimately transmitted by cultural forces, not by supernatural forces telling people, hey, put something on. You don't look great with uh, without that. Yeah, that, that that's OK. Let's basically look at the Titanic. The event happened, but different witnesses um, have different interpretations of it. They claim different events happened at different times, so there's contradictions, but it doesn't say that Titanic didn't happen. And that's how I would approach those different religious interpretations, that they all are all sensing something well, they the, can't read. Okay, okay. okay. So I, it, I, I can understand I can there. understand that. But but Andrew, do you know what the big difference between your Titanic analogy here and religion is? Sure. We we have found the the wreck of the Titanic and we can we can see how it sunk. We can see that it like broke in two and it you know and and then it sank. Like we can we can see how it sunk and everything like that. Like we can analyze it, we can quantify it and we can we can explain why it sunk and and all of that kind of stuff can we do any of that for any other religions also the fact that there have been so many religions in the past that everybody has believed in and all of them seem to be different and all of them have uh, up until present day have definitely been disproven right and currently our current set of gods that people believe in those are all different from one one another that they're all exclusionary uh so it just it kind of seems like appealing to, oh, everybody just believes in all this kind of stuff. It makes it seem like, well, everybody can't be right, but everybody can definitely be wrong. And so it kind of seems just like everybody's pretty fucking wrong about it because nothing in religion or these beliefs that have been uh, permeating society throughout, you know, human uh, civilization, none of it has panned out and has actually comported with reality. We've always been able to explain it with natural processes, natural means, natural explanations. So it doesn't seem like it's all of that um, compelling to now uh, say, oh, well, yeah, all of those other ones were wrong, but now, now we got the right definite, like we got the right description of God just now. Like he's revealed himself just now. Like there are even Christians out there that say that about all the other denominations that came prior to their particular denomination. So it just kind of seems like it works against you. Um, I don't think it works against me. And let me explain why. Um, you can approach that with foods or politics. We all have different politics, like communists, um, fascism, uh, democracy, or whatever, all these different political ideologies, and you can say, oh, they all disagree with each other. Therefore, they're all wrong. But government still exists because government... No, just because people that, that, that is such a horrible doesn't. analogy. But Because, look, here's why it's a horrible analogy. Well, it, true, there are different governments. All of them uh, think that they have the best way or the most efficient way in order to run their country. But you know what we could do with those governments that we can't do with God is quantify the results. We can't quantify the results of God or anything that God has done, but we can quantify the result. Like a good example of this is, is uh, trickle down economics that was, you know, introduced in what the late eighties or something like that, but trickle down economics 
we know doesn't work like it's portrayed to work because we can quantify the results of it and we know that it doesn't work. So that makes it a, a bad uh, political idea or a bad uh, economic idea rather. And so we can quantify it. We can't quantify anything about God. We quantify religion all the time. We have studies on the brain and what ritual does to the, to the brain and what it does to cultures and humans. We do. Um, and one, one question for you, or for both of you, um, is communism true or false? That, that I don't even know what that absurd. means. Right. And that's what is communism that's true or false? Like, I, that that's makes I no sense religion. to me as a question. I also exactly. have to ask, when you say communism, do you mean the version expounded by um, Marx originally, or do you think the Leninist branch or the Trotskyite version or the Maoist version or what's going on more recently in North Korea? When you say communism, you do realize that's an extremely broad intellectual tradition. There isn't just one form of it. That's just like to say there's one form of democracy. And you say, well, uh, the democracy, of course, here in America is very different than in England with parliamentary systems, with first past the post voting versus um, ranked choice voting is like, yeah, there's there's a lot of different things there. So to say is democracy true is a very strange thing. It's not a proposition that has a true or false statement. It's more a question of does it achieve goals that we can go and see actually comports to what we want to have happen. I mean, we could, for example, compare and say the U.S. has this sort of uh, policy. Does it actually increase GDP or not? And if that's, of course, a goal that we have, we can go and see, does it actually comport to that goal or not? And do at least something resembling science. When it comes to economics and sociology, it's much noisier than in physics. It's really hard to do controlled experiments with people. When I try putting people in random control groups and like hold them down to do experiments on them, they tend to complain and I keep getting told that that's unethical, you know, you know problems like that. But in general, this is harder to do, but still something that we can actually go and evaluate and say, hey, this is better than that. When it comes to theistic propositions, Who's doing the experiments to say, as you can tell, definitely the Catholics are more right than the Protestants when it comes to communion. All right, uh, Andrew, we do have a lot of calls lined up. We do appreciate you calling in. If you want to give us kind of your final thoughts here, uh, we, we do need to move on. Uh, OK, um, no, I, 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 I think I made my points. Um, have a good night, guys. Thanks for the conversation. I enjoyed it. All right. Thank you so much for calling in, Andrew. I hope you call in again. It, this was a great conversation. Totally agree. Take care. Take care, guys. Bye. All right. Bye. Good night. What's up, Heaven? Thank you so much for checking out this clip from The Line. If you enjoyed this clip today, you can get more of it by subscribing to The Line. So hit up those links in the description so you can catch me the next time I host Skep Talk. I don't know. Was that 20 seconds? I hear some filler shit for, you know, to fill out the 20 seconds. I don't know. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy.